when you are playing, expressing something that is deep within you, and people are taking the time and effort to listen. That's as intimate as it gets, really. Since I was a kid, I just felt like having the piano near me, it was like a confidant. You don't belong to it, it doesn't belong to you. There's a kind of symbiotic relationship. Um, basically, any song that you hear or piece that you hear from a movie, it can be played on this instrument. And therefore, it, it's an incredibly versatile skill to have. So my parents, they made it a chore for me somewhat to practice every day. I had to do my 30 minutes to an hour at the age of seven. And I just wanted to get that done so I could go out and play, um, get on with my life, I thought. But um, I think pretty early on, they realized that if they threatened me by telling me like if I was bad, if I had done something naughty, that they would stop my piano lessons. You know, I would often say I didn't like to play the piano. I would, I would be like, no, 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 please. So, Clearly, subconsciously, there was something already there that I felt that I could really go to the piano um, as, yeah, as like my daily diary in a way. There are also moments I know that uh, people always say that when we go through our teenage years, that it's a difficult, a tumultuous time. I don't remember any of that, but I guess... I guess the piano, of course, was an outlet for, for anyone because in a way, like if we have our inner frustrations by playing something, just by expressing it, it always helps when you talk to someone, but it would also help such a great deal when you're just like playing something. Um, I have had angry moments where I would like go and play in a rage, but then um, after half an hour or so, I would come away and I, I'm totally calmer because I just had my little outbreak. Um, so. Yeah, I definitely look at it now as, uh, as a way of life. And when days go by where I don't touch the piano, and if I have those, there, there, I do have the feeling that there's something missing. Yeah, the piano has um, an incredibly wide breadth of repertoire. And um, with that repertoire, one can be at different levels, like even as a beginner. I was playing Jingle Bells, I was playing Silent Night during the holiday seasons and that brought me such joy because these are pieces which I knew and I had heard for a long time before even playing it and it's just incredible to be able to then express it finally yourself. There's all kinds of versions of pieces which you can start out with, like easy Bach pieces and then maybe after a few years of learning you you play the real thing which is, which is harder. I mean the good thing about piano is you can also really um, easily track your progress um, you're able to see how you've improved i would say month to month if you stick at it um, there, there's just so many rewards which are visible i think on other instruments it might take a lot longer just to generate a, a nice sound whereas on piano if you stick to it and then you have the right guidance you're able to play some of the very simple pieces beautifully like quite quickly I think the piece that um, affected me the most and had such a long time effect on me was Schubert's um, 960 Sonata. I heard it for the first time when I was maybe like eight or nine. We had a great recording of um, Stephen Kovacevic along with several others, but that was the interpretation that sticks. Um, and we heard it a lot. And then I went to the school library and um, there was a small picture book about some of the composers. And there was one about Franz Schubert and I read it. And there was just, um, yeah, you learned that Schubert passed away when he was only 31, he was very sick. And then that sonata, it turned out he wrote just a couple months before his death when um, he was dying alone. And somehow that really, um, I, of course for me, 31 seemed like pretty old already. So I didn't understand the gravity of that. I mean, I'm 31 now, um, but I did feel that like dying alone uh, without real like um, friends and family around you and then to write that music. I always thought of that music as being depressing sounding, like sad, tragic. And then when I read that story and then I heard it again, um, it was a moment where I, I cried and that doesn't happen so often. But um, I think for, for me at that age, um, it had such a lasting impression on me that I told myself I'm not going to play that piece. Like, um, I've played so many Schubert sonatas, but I really shy away from that one just because I know what emotions are there and what I what impressions I had from that age. They they really stayed present in my brain, um, and 
yeah, nowadays I, I recently, like in the last couple months when we have a lot of time on our hands, I did take out the score and I, I looked at it and um, my sister has a dog. He was like lying under the piano. He wanted to go out actually, but he looked so sad and um, like desperate a little bit wanting to go out. And I was playing this movement and I actually again had this moment of, you know, choking up and having wet eyes. And it showed me that, you know, these such emotions, I mean, they say a lot more than words. Teaching in terms of giving a presentation or teaching to, to an audience, not live, but rather virtually, this is something which I have done for the first time with Tone Base. Almost imagining myself in a listener's seat, thinking what best could help them and shows me how many different ways music can be interpreted, which is kind of why we do it and why it's so much fun. And I never think of it as teaching per se that I'm telling them what to do, but rather I'm getting a lot of feedback from them. And it's up to me to try to find the best way which works on a personal level to each and every one of the people that I have the chance to work with. Even when I was young, um, I was always on YouTube looking. I was hoping, of course, to get not just performances from great artists, but to hear some of their insight. For me, reading CD booklets, it expressed a lot when someone um, explained why they recorded a work, what it means to them. And so now today with today's technology, um, having this chance, I think it's a fantastic way to get closer, to really get as personal as it comes like with some of the great minds and um, and tone base is absolutely a resource which I think is is like thriving and is really enriching the minds of the young musical next generation.